Radar is a useful position fixing tool, when we factor in the limitations of the radar set and the quality of the targets. Radar reflectors are fitted to objects like buoys to improve the range of detection and assist identification. Most important buoys and many minor buoys are now fitted with radar reflectors that are incorporated within the structure of the buoy and not so visible to the navigator. Radar beacons can be either rackens or remarks. These transmit characteristic signals to give more positive identification. In poor visibility and high density traffic, including boats fishing, it might be helpful to be able to identify the desired target. Rackens transmit a signal when a signal when triggered by transmissions from ship's radar. Remarks transmit signals independently at regular intervals. Most radar beacons respond to 3 cm, or X-band, radar emissions. The Hibiscus platform is charted as being fitted with a racken that transmits the Morse code for, B, or Bravo. Position by radar gives quite accurate results and must be used whenever we have radar conspicuous objects. The advantage with radar fixes is that it just needs one object to get the ship's position. We can get the range and bearing of this object and plot the same on the chart. Let us consider a theoretical passage, north, through Mappy Pyre's mouth. This morning, a navigational warning was received, the Punta del Arino light is unlit. The coastline to the east is low, and unreliable for ranges. The radar reflectors on the isolated danger buoy marking the eastern channel, the lateral marker buoys marking the middle channel and on Soldado Rock are all in good working order. In the perfect conditions, our radar screen looks something like this the weak echo of the low coast on the right and the half beam width distorted echoes from the buoys, the beacon and the rock. Professionals pay attention to details, and you should have noticed the drying heights around Soldado Rock. That means, if you were doing this passage on a spring low tide, you could be getting echoes from the dry heights and other rocks. Fixes from land features should not be relied upon until the features have been positively identified and found consistent with the estimated position, soundings or position lines from other methods. All radars are equipped with a variable range marker, VRM, and an electronic bearing line, EBL. These allow you to obtain an accurate fix from a single object. Placing the electronic bearing line on an object will give you its bearing, relative to the ship's head, and the VRM will give its range. Most radars are connected to the gyro or compass these days, but that connect is not available and radar is still working, the bearings from the EBL can still be used. By adding or subtracting the bearing from the ship's heading, depending on whether to object is to starboard or port, and correcting for deviation and variation of the ship's compass, the bearing can be drawn on the chart and intersected with the range to give an accurate position by day or night. We can use the EBL and VRM to take simultaneous bearings, simultaneous ranges or simultaneous ranges and bearings. As we proceed north through Mappy Pyre's mouth, we try to get a number of position lines in quick succession. We turn the electronic bearing line, EBL, to take a bearing of what we believe is Soldado Rock, and take a note of it. We turn the variable range marker, VRM, to take a range of what we believe is Soldado Rock, and take a note of it. We turn the variable range marker, VRM, to take a range of what we believe is Soldado Rock, and take a note of it. We then turn the EBL around and take a bearing of what we believe is the isolated danger beacon off Ikakos point, and take a note of it. We turn the variable range marker, VRM, to take a range of what we believe is the isolated danger beacon off Ikakos point, and take a note of it. Now we plot our position lines. This is the bearing position line from Soldado Rock. Next we plot the bearing position line from the isolated danger beacon off Ikakos point. The angle between these position lines would not produce an accurate fix. Now we plot the range position line from Soldado Rock. This position line adds more confidence about the fix because of the angles between the position lines. Finally, we plot the range position line from the isolated danger beacon off Ikakos point. 
This type of perfect fix is unlikely in the real world. In this example, we are proceeding north up the east coast toward Galera Point at night. We need to monitor our position in the current as we approach the point. We have to look at the features on the chart and match or identify them with what we have through the window or on the radar screen. The visibility is good and we can see both the Brigand Hill and Galera Point lights. The chart tells us that the coast around the Brigand Hill lighthouse is low beach and swamp, so would be unreliable for ranges. The cliff of Manzanilla Point should make a strong radar echo. For a good fix, we can take and plot a radar range position line from the Manzanilla Point cliff. Take and plot a visual bearing position line from the Brigand Hill Light. Take and plot a visual bearing position line from Galera Point Light. The two visual bearings and the radar range position lines provide a more accurate fix than GPS. Another way to obtain your position by radar is to use the VRM to find the range of two objects, three are better. Here we see a fix in the Boca Grande using position lines from radar ranges from Shukashagare, Patos and Punta Penas. Parallel indexing is a simple and effective way of monitoring a ship's progress by observing the movement of the echo of a clearly identified mark with respect to lines drawn on the radar display parallel to the ship's track. Back to Mappy Pyre's mouth, the intended track is the red line on the chart. We can measure the perpendicular distance from the intended track to the stationary, radar conspicuous object. Let's call the distance, X. On this range, Soldado Rock is on the edge of the screen. For this application, we can change the range up. Now we are seeing further. The most basic radars will allow the operator to detach the electronic bearing line, and place it anywhere on the screen. In this application, we place the detached EBL in the direction of the intended track and a distance equal to, X, from the origin. So if the target from Soldado Rock is on the EBL, then the ship should be on the intended track. Parallel indexing does not remove, or even reduce, the need for position fixing by the prescribed methods and at the prescribed intervals. This fix places the vessel to the left of the intended track. The EBL parallel index will similarly be to the left of the Soldado Rock Echo. This fix places the vessel to the right of the intended track. The EBL parallel index will similarly be to the right of the Soldado Rock Echo. When proceeding along a coast, it is often possible to decide on the least distance to which the coast can be approached without encountering offlying dangers. Providing the coast can be unmistakably identified. This distance can be used as a clearing range outside of which the ship must remain to proceed in safety. In this slide, the navigator is using the third range ring as a clearing range. As long as Soldado Rock stays outside of the third range ring, the vessel is maintaining the clearing distance. 